Hi, this is Leslie. Hope you're well. And welcome to this update on the chart of Bitcoin. In this video, I want to talk to you about the recent action on the chart of Bitcoin, especially the recent drop and retest of the panic lows of May. And I want to talk to you what this potentially could mean, especially in relationship to this particular chart over here. And I want to talk to you about what this potentially could mean in relationship to Bitcoin as well. So join me. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, just recently, in the last few days, we saw Bitcoin drop to retest the panic lows. As you can see here, these were the panic lows of May, about 30,000 approximately, and Bitcoin dropped. It retested that level. As a matter of fact, just went below it slightly and then bounced very strongly, as you can see here. But it did so. Notice that we retested that low. So we did test that low of May, as you can see here, with positive divergence on the MACD. Notice the MACD is rising here, even though Bitcoin made a lower low. So what could this potentially mean for Bitcoin? Let me first of all show you this. What I'm going to talk about in this section of the video is extremely important to understanding what's been happening to the price of Bitcoin. You see, what I'm showing to you here is the Elliott Wave Theory model. And according to Elliott Wave Theory, quite simply what it says is that markets tend to trend in five waves. In other words, market prices subdivide into five waves when they're going in the direction of one larger trend, as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five. However, they subdivide into three waves when they're going against the one larger trend, as you can see here, A, B, C, okay? Now, here's where it gets interesting. Notice that what you're seeing here is what's called a correction, a corrective wave, A, B, C, okay? Now, A waves are often composed of three waves, you can see here, so that's a three-wave structure. B waves are often composed of three waves as well, but C waves are often composed of five waves, as you can see here in blue, okay? So C waves are often composed of five smaller waves, and the reason is that C waves are impulsive waves. Now, I don't want to make this complicated. I want to make it simple, okay? So to keep it simple, here's all you have to remember, which is that the C wave of an ABC structure, as you can see here, has five smaller waves within it. But the bottom line is this, once the fifth wave, so once you get the fifth wave of that C wave completing, then we can get ready for the C wave to complete and then likely start the next major trend to the upside. In other words, the continuation of the uptrend higher. Okay, that's why this matters. Let's go back to our chart of Bitcoin. So as you can see here, let's go back and let's zoom out a little bit on this chart. As I've been saying now for several weeks and months, Bitcoin is in a likely correction which is ABC. This was the A wave, the B wave, and I said this was the likely C wave. In fact, you may remember in a video I made some weeks ago, I said this was very likely a C wave within this ABC wave structure. But here's a problem. What we did not know at the time is which wave within this C wave were we in. As I'm sure you know, and as I just explained here, let's just go back to that chart one more time. So as I just showed you in this particular chart, the C wave has five waves in it. The question is, which wave of this five wave structure within the C wave were we in? So here's what I said to our members some weeks ago at the start of June. Let me play for you these videos and we'll come back. The question is, have all the five waves within that C wave completed, which would then provide us for a more probable bottom in the price. Looking back on this chart, I have to tell you that I, I still don't think so. Um, but I personally think the more likely wave count is something like this. This was wave one, two, three, and this appears to be the way four corrective. This is part of a way four correction, I should just say. So this zigzag we're seeing here, this appears to be a way four, okay, uh, a way four correction. And that means another wave down is still looking quite likely. So that, if that's our wave three, the smaller wave three, as you can see in the white count, then this is potentially part of a way four correction and if Bitcoin now drops below 33,425, it could trigger a move down into this level. And I actually think so if this is our, if this is our part of our wave four correction here, which by the way, wave four could actually extend all the way up here into 41,000. But bottom line is, if this is part of a wave four correction, then a move and a break below the support level here could drag Bitcoin down into these levels the fifth wave of C. So that's what I think is the more likely scenario.
which would mean what? Which would, which would mean as long as Bitcoin continues to remain below this 41,000 level, it's looking likely we may see another retest the panic lows. And yes, we may even extend into this level. So essentially a move follow through below 34,500. That increases the likelihood we could retest the panic lows. So we could potentially go and retest the panic lows near 30,000. 30, and yes, we might even move into this zone here as well. All right, guys, we're back. Now, as you heard me say there in the member videos for the last several weeks, I've been saying this now, that as long as Bitcoin, firstly, as long as Bitcoin remains below this key level, below the, just below the 41,000 level, as long as Bitcoin remains below this level, there is still a strong risk that we may go back and retest the panic lows of May, which we did, by the way, just recently, a few days ago. But there's something else I said in the member video at the start of June, and here's what it is, that very likely Bitcoin has not yet made a five wave move to the downside. For example, when Bitcoin dropped here, as you can see in this likely C wave, the fact is I could only count three waves down. One, two, three. Okay. And that's a big problem because it's not likely that Bitcoin could have bottomed at this point when it's only down, again, three waves, as you can see in the Roman numerals. Because why? Let's just remind ourselves, because in a C wave, we have five waves down, as you can see here on the chart. Let me just do it. One, two, three, four, five. So in other words, going back to this chart of Bitcoin, to me, it looked as though we only had one, two, three waves down. That meant we still have another couple of waves to go. In other words, wave four and wave five. And that's why the beginning of June, I said, look, very likely we still have another wave to go to the downside. Why? Because this structure you can see here, this structure to me looked corrective, like a zigzag. In other words, this structure on the chart looked to me more likely to be a wave four. For example, something like this. So that would be wave four. And that meant we had one more wave to go to the downside. In other words, this wave you're seeing here. Okay, that's the likely wave five of C. Okay, so going back to our chart on the Elliott waves, this is what I'm talking about. Five waves to the downside for the C wave to complete. So it does look as though that this recent drop we had in the price of Bitcoin to our first target, by the way, Bitcoin dropped to our first target level of support. As you can see here, Bitcoin dropped down and boom, it hit the first target support zone at 29,076. By the way, in case you're wondering why that level, why is that important? Here's why. Because if you were to do this, let me show you. If you were to measure the wave one and two here, wave one and two on this Bitcoin chart, and if you did a one six one eight extension of this, that essentially would give you this blue line that you're seeing here at 29,076 as the golden ratio, one six one eight extension of this one and two that you're seeing here in the Roman numerals. All right, guys. So that's why Elliott waves and Fibonacci can be very helpful. So guys, am I saying to you that I think the wave five of C has bottomed? Am I saying to you that I think the C wave of this ABC pattern has likely bottomed now? I gotta be honest with you guys. I don't know because at the moment, I still don't yet have a bottoming structure. Look, the chart does look pretty good now. I mean, it is beginning to look better. For example, we have now a retest. Take a look, we've had a retest like this, we've had a lower low, and we've had a retest the panic lows, as you can see here. That's a good thing. With divergence, notice we have positive divergence. Positive divergence is a sign that the force of the downtrend here is likely weakening. And that's a positive sign, it's a bullish sign. However, guys, a divergence on its own is not enough. What we also need is the start of an uptrend. And at the moment, guys, I still don't yet see a high probability reversal or a high probability uptrend or bottoming structure, okay? I wanna be very clear about this. Just because we've rallied for three days here, so even though Bitcoin has managed to bounce very nicely here, as you can see, very strong bounce with positive divergence. So even though this looks pretty good, as I'm sure you know, a three-day rally or three days of green bars does not make a trend, okay? So just because price has been going up for three days, it does not mean we have reverse trend. It does not make a new uptrend, okay? Now, is it possible that Bitcoin might have bottomed? It's possible, yes, but it's not probable, okay? There's a difference between what is possible and what is probable. At the moment, here's what I can say. I think I can say there's a high probability that this drop here in the price of Bitcoin, which we had anticipated in the last several weeks, we still don't know whether this potential wave five has bottomed. 
Okay, so I think we are getting close to a potential bottom here in the price of Bitcoin. I think the charts picture is beginning to improve and look more positive. However, guys, what we don't know, what we still don't know, is whether the five, the wave five of C has bottomed. Okay, because we still don't know how deep this wave five might go. All right, guys, but here's the bottom line. Once the wave five of C bottoms here, then we can potentially see the major reversal to the upside. At the moment, at the moment here, we have to be very cautious. We must not jump to any conclusions here. Okay? As I mentioned, just because the price has been going up for you know a few days, a three-day rally, three days of green bars is not making a new trend. So we've got to be very careful here. We've got to be very cautious here because even though I do think that we're still in the wave five of C, I still don't know with a high probability that the wave five of C has bottomed. I still don't see an uptrend. I don't see a bottoming structure just yet. So we've got to be patient here. We've got to be careful, be cautious, and just be patient for the price action to tell us. All right, guys? Okay, so we've got to be careful here not to try and catch a falling knife. So for the moment, things are beginning to look slightly better, but let's just wait and see if the price action here can put in an uptrend and a high probability bottoming structure. All right, guys, let me just say on Sunday in the members video, I'm going to continue our chart analysis of Bitcoin. It's going to be very educational. And also, guys, as a member, you can watch the recording of my webinar with Guy Cohen, who is a leading expert in options. And we talked about hedging strategies. And if you want to become a member, you can join that link you see right there. Thanks very much indeed. And I'll see you guys in the next video update. Bye for now.